Cheers. That was pretty good. Beverly did her part and I did my part. It went smooth. Uh, the people that delivered it, it was seamless. Uh, I, you didn't see it in the video, um, but all we had to do was just push it, air the tires up and push it off the back of the truck and they were on their way. Uh, little, you know, I had to keep moving the winch back and forth because I had a reduction, a three to one reduction on the, on the cable. My winch is only 2,000 pounds, so I had to re do a reduction on it. No big deal, it's slower, but it, it works. It's very little labor on the, on the winch, by the way. Anyhow, uh, talk a little bit about the Bronco. This Bronco, uh, 78 uh, Ranger, uh, Bronco Ranger XLT, not uncommon, very common uh, model. They came with a few different things, but we weren't gonna go through that right here. We're gonna talk about what this one has. I've ordered the Marty Report. And hopefully um, it gets here pretty quick. I don't suspect there's anything unusual about it. I think it's just a pretty standard, straightforward uh, Bronco of the era. Uh, one thing I did notice on it, on the VIN number, it's a low, no, uh, early build. Um, it's less than the first 10,000. So it was 9,892 of the first 10,000 built was this one. Again, nothing rare about that, but just an early build. So that means there might've been some changes throughout the year they built these so let's take a quick look at the two things that i do know are well three things the ac was optional another thing were these uh 10 hole alloy rims they were they were optional the flat tires weren't optional they came with it uh just recently <laughs> uh so those those rims the ac and that sport wheel over there now i'm hoping it shows up on the Marty report that that uh, was built. The truck was built with it because I don't think a lot of them were with that. Let's take a run around there and look at it. A lot of them were built with that um, sport wheel, but I don't know for sure how many were built with that particular sport wheel. I know on my yellow F one hundred seventy nine, it was built with a sport wheel and it's missing. But and I know they're very expensive to buy. So I was very happy to see that this was still intact. And I believe, I believe right now that that would have been a, a part of the build, but we'll see, we'll see. And what else, that's about it that I can see might've been optional. Uh, you can see inside here, let's just go in quickly. Um, it has red front seats. Now, I don't know the story on those, uh, but the back seat, oh, I can't get it up right now without one hand. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. So maybe I can get this down. There we go. Yeah. There she is. So I need a light in here. Anyway, it has the, the blue uh, back seat, which would be original with that uh, woven fabric in the middle. Sort of the, I don't know what you would call it. There's a name for that, but I don't know off the top of my head. It seats, that back seat is in, it's dirty as heck, but it appears to be in really good shape. The carpet's uh, so-so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything special about the carpet. Got some holes up here, stuff like that. Uh, but these front seats, this is where I'm going with this. Uh, these front seats are, look to be period correct, but obviously they're the wrong color. Though I'm grateful that I have them. 
because I do like the bucket seat over a bench seat. You can buy complete seat covers for this and I can repaint that console. So another thing in this vehicle that's different from my 79 pickup, which I, I didn't realize, I can't know if you can see that or not guys, or people, is that this odometer and speedometer, the odometer appears to be in miles. So it would have 80, I can't read it, don't have my glasses on. 80 some thousand miles which is 130,000 kilometers a little more but what it is that on the outside in the large letters is in miles per hour and on the inside are the uh, kilometers per hour now on my this, this is a 78 keep that in mind now 1979 my yellow pickup truck out in the yard it's the kilometers are in the large kilometers per hour in the large letters and the miles per hour in the small letters on the inside so the that this was the transition year between 78 and 79 for that uh, odometer on these vehicles all right outside again uh, this truck has been resprayed once got the uh, overspray on the on the weather stripping so sign of not such a hot job not a really good paint job probably Mako um, the sun visor wouldn't have been factory installed uh, it would be a aftermarket and likely after it was resprayed it looks like the uh, it was all done around the same time. It's got optional moss on everything. And there's some filler in these quarters right there. And these inner rockers aren't great either. Their inner uh, wheelhouse isn't great. And back here on the corners, it's pretty rough. So we're going to talk about that too in a minute. And uh, what else do I know about this thing? I don't know a lot more about it. I know it's the C6 has to be cleaned out. The shaft has to be cleaned up. So what I want to do here, um, there, like this panel here, I want to sand that a bit and, and respray that black, uh, like a matte black, semi-gloss black rather. And uh, while I have the engine out, I think I'm going to tackle these frame up in here, at least the area where I can't reach when the engine's in and get it sanded down lightly and give it a coat of uh, rust protect, uh, rust sealer and then some uh, matte black again or semi-gloss black rather just because it's easy to get at now and probably that uh, brake booster because <clears throat> with the brakes being pedal being stuck down like that my guess is that's going to have to come off so I can lubricate in, in around the mechanism and stuff so we'll see. It does have brake fluid in it. Uh, it's old, uh, so it has to be drained out because that stuff is uh, will absorb water. So I did open that up and look in there. What else is missing a starter relay, but I have a brand new one for it. The AC stuff, I'm not going to worry about it at all right now. Just get the engine in. Is the, the goal here is to get it running. And the 400 engine is not, like I mean, it's not, those aren't, I say they're not a good engine they're solid they're a really industrial engine that they aren't a performance engine then she's sitting right there and you guys saw me go get this thing and i know it starts and we'll go with that because i could get it but really if i were to keep if i was going to keep this truck and put a lot of money into it after the body work's all done i would probably go with a godzilla a 7.3 godzilla engine and it would give you a modern transmission modern engine but that's dreaming and uh, I try not to dream too much because it gets very expensive uh, these mirrors I'm quite sure are not right for this but we'll know when the Marty report comes if this style is right either way they're rusted this door has a little dent right here where this mirror is and the same on the other side same thing quarter panel on this side not as bad as the other side but still not great this is where it would have had that uh, rear mount uh, bracket, uh, the spare tire bracket. And in this vehicle, I'm pretty sure it didn't come with that. Well, the fact that it has the inside mount one tells me it didn't. The rear bumper was good, except it's got a little wow in it. So I think I can yank that back a tiny bit. But it's really no rust on that bumper, which is nice. The tailgate has been replaced, but this tailgate is solid. It's got a tiny, tiny bit of, it's like it was pr primered or something and the primer got washed away somehow or whatever. 
but there's no rust at all. That's a solid, that's like a, like a brand new tailgate. I don't know if the rear window works. We're gonna find out the electrical's here pretty quick too. So now, this is getting a little bit long. I know a lot of, of long-winded uh, without much action. So with the state of these quarter panels, and I've been asked a few times about putting quarter panels on, uh, it's quicker and stuff and all that jazz uh, on the Thunderbird. And I, I agree, it probably is quicker. But for that Thunderbird, those quarter panels are deadly expensive. And if you buy a partial panel, like if I was just running a partial panel, I might end up doing just as much welding as I do there. Anyway, I'm going to take this Bronco at a different approach because I've been asked about these panels and I can get um, quarter panels for this very easily here in Canada, not a problem. Uh, I actually contacted a guy this morning about quarter panels and I can get them from Alberta. The, ch the shipping is 150 bucks each and the panels are, are 540 a piece. So for 13 or $1,400, I, I can get both panels for this thing and there's no body filler. Well, there might be a little up and around here because this is where they go to. No body filler, no, you know, split, uh, butt welding or any of that stuff. So I ordered them. So keep, keep that in mind. If, you, uh, if you're just kind of finding my channel and you're interested in this Bronco, um, subscribe and hit the notification bell because this, this will be a, a full four quarter panel replacement, both sides. Uh, and it'll be done over time because I still want to keep working on my Thunderbird. All right, so let's get uh, up on the tripod and we'll put some power on the system and see what's going on there. I'll grab the alternator cable. Somebody did, uh, somebody did a quick exit removal on the alternator. They, the cable, <laughs> they cut the cable off. But anyway, there's enough there we can hook it in. So what I'm going to do is hook it in uh, on my battery pack. And I'm going to be looking for smoke or anything like that because you don't know what happens in that case. So let's go for it. A little spark. There. Oh, a little spark. Oh. All right, I don't know if you can see that or not. The brake lights come on. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, they did. That makes sense because the brake pedal is stuck down. All right, well, let's see if we have any headlights. I'm looking for smoke. I'm smelling for smoke. I'm not seeing anything. But the, the brake lights are on. I just, I'm focusing on this, this burning wire thing right now, so I'm sorry if it seems I'm a little distracted. It's a, this is when you could get a fire, when you're firing something for the sitting for 21 years. I don't see anything, I don't smell anything. It's nice to just have a quick clip like that, where if you do smell something, you can unhook the power quickly, rather than bolting down a battery to it. All right, well, seems good in here. I'm not getting a dome light. No, no dome light. Let's see if the, head, the park lights work and the headlights. Well, the headlights come on. All right, well, that's something. Oh, parking light in the back on this side. And there's a marker light on the front on the left side. Nothing here. And the back one over here is out. So the, the right side is out. All right, that's something. And nothing down in here either on these ones. All right, so no parking lights. It says two marker lights on the left side. So let's see what the turn signal will do. There's the right turn signal. I don't hear anything. There may not even be a, a switch in it. No, it's not coming on. There may not be a turn signal relay switch even in it. There's been some work done to the dash. Nothing happening there. All right, let's go to the other side. I see a dash light on though, inside there. All right, let's try the other side. Oh, did anything happen there? Nope, nothing. Something changed in the back one on this side. Yeah, it dimmed the brake light. <laughs> so somebody, something's going on in the wiring. All right, let's unplug her and then we'll go underneath. Okay, we're underneath the, underneath the passenger side front. All right, I'll leave that like that. So that looks, 
Oh, that's just a little scale. Not even scale, it's just, this is like, it's like brand new under here, really. Not new, but I mean, that's exaggeration, of course. But there's just a little, very little bit of scale. And this is where they rust in the, around these joints. And this one is like solid. The cab mounts are good. Wow, that's nice. What about up over there by the, usually it's out on the outer part. Never much of an issue up in there. That looks really good. And I'll go back onto the back seat, the back floor pan. Wow, this is, uh, I mean, there's there's rust on things. This, this mounting seatbelt bolt there is a little bit grubby looking, but around here with all the, a little bit scaly right here, but it's not thin by any means, it's just scaly. And up under there where the other seat belt bolts are and stuff. Holy, yeah, she's good. Uh, yeah, that's good. Really good, really good. The uh, rear, the rear discs and stuff, um, everything looks pretty dry. It had had some wet on it, maybe just from sitting all these years, it's dried up. Um, won't know until you run it. The rear pinion looks pretty decent. I don't see, I'll check the fluid in it. All right, um, I'll go back to the under behind the axle. All right, I'm at the back, uh, a gas tank. Well, the gas, I mean, you can't tell with gas tanks because they'll rot out from the inside out. But the outside looks good on this side. And that appears to be the, uh, appears to me like it's the, the large tank on this. That would be another option. Uh, XLTs, I think a lot of them had that large tank. It's got a hitch. Uh, I don't believe that's a factory installed hitch. Doesn't look like it since it's welded right to the frame. And because it's, well, no, that wouldn't be factory installed. Look at the, the hack, like cut it with a uh, zip cut. Since it's welded right on the frame, I won't be taking it off. So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, let's see, up in here, the rear bed part. Again, everything looks pretty much decent. It's, it's been sitting around, yes. Like the little, there's flaky stuff on it, but it's not much. And way up in there, I can't really get up in there to see very well. These are areas that, all right, these are areas that would rust up in here under the bed. And right back there, I can't see it, but you guys probably can. Up in there, it looks to be rusted a bit, so hopefully there's no holes, but if there is, well, we'll have to fix them. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, there's some rust inside the frame, around these holes, because it had mud build up in it. But the, the actual inners, are good except right around the wheel lip. So uh, you can order these uh, inner wheelhouse pieces. They're cheap. They're like 66 bucks a piece here in Canada. 60, 60 to 70 dollars. But overall, I mean, the frame still has, now whether someone had painted it or that's an original paint, I don't know if they even painted these from the factory. A lot of Ford stuff come out with no paint on it doesn't matter it's in really good shape it's not all rusted out in pieces so let's go take a look at the driver's side all right under the driver's seat uh driver's front floor pan and uh and it's good except for which i suspected because it's very common for where your feet go there will be holes but that is that is such a small patch job though the carpet will have to come out to do it yeah, that's like, this is solid, except for right where that would have had moisture stain from where your feet go all the time. And up in here, so that's the front pan and the mounts. Sorry, I didn't look at the mounts. They look good, uh, like where these mounts are. These are problematic as well on these trucks, where they go into the mounts. And uh, up in here again, this is where I was looking at when we first came down this side, this area. It's, it has some scale, but it's not, not even thin. So what's going on back here? Let's have, bring the light back a little bit. Um, so this has got a little more scale on it right here than the other sides. 
It seems very solid though, but it'll have to be all cleaned off and, and painted. Still has this, this is a support. It's a galvanized piece by the looks of it. It's in good shape. Yeah, just a little bit of scale. Like, you know, the rare happens when these vehicles sit around, they get that on them, but there's no holes. The uh, mounts are so, so there's some wet cracking on them. So let's go back a little further. We'll go back uh, to the rear wheel well here. Let's see what we can see. All right, get the light up in there. All right, so back here, there's a plate that's bolted on. It seems to be in good shape. I can't get up underneath there. But the same as the other side, uh, there's some flaky stuff here. That's like uh, undercoating but it's not, there's no holes on it that I can see. Looks good. And then we go back in over here, same thing. Again, just that scale. So you light sanding, you can get that off. My favorite job is sanding underneath something. All right, that's that. So let's take a look at underneath the, the back quarter of this one, on this side. Uh, back under the rear left side, Get my light in, and the dog leg it needs some work up in here. A little tiny bit of work right there, so that's not bad. But uh, there is an issue back here. Uh, just looking up in here, this looks decent. A little bit of dirt, dirt falling down. But what I do see right away is this up in here. So of this hole underneath, this is the only part I found that is not concerning to me. I was expecting more than that that this here where this mount goes in is, is uh, rotted out right there. So that's not bad, one out of the whole thing. So that'll have to definitely be fixed. Uh, I don't know how I'm, much I can do from the top on this, but I'll have to see what needs to be done there. But that, that yeah, you can see where the, the mount has settled back in. So this has dropped a little bit on it. Anyway, that's not too bad out of a whole truck that's been sitting around for ages so yeah some work one place in the back to do well I can live with that uh, but this door jam needs some attention uh, right into here so I'll get this off so that was another uh, decision another uh, it was helpful to, to help decide on um, whether to use full panels or not. So when I have this, this full quarter panel off, it gain, I gain access to this whole area. And I believe I might get access to that rear mount, but we'll see. But yeah, this, is, this whole area here needs a fair bit of work. Uh, this looks bad up here, but it's not rusted through, but it's, it's got pitting. So like up in here, it's got pitting. So once that panel's all off, that quarter will be able to uh, address all that stuff. And in here, there's some swelling. So something happened in here. So, yeah. And this here, this whole section will have to be rebuilt. But I can build those. That's, that's easy stuff to make. You can buy these, I think. But I've already spent enough on quarter panels. So, <laughs> so you guys know me. Yeah, I'd rather build it if I rather than buy it. You know how it goes. It's like you pay with your time or you pay with your money, right? So if you have the time, it's better if you can do it. It's better to pay with your time than your money. But sometimes you have to say, look, I have a little bit of money. I'm going to pay with the money. And that's what I felt like with these quarter panels. Oh, and I wanted to mention these, uh, and they're not in perfect shape, but I think I could clean them up enough. Those uh, trims are still on this thing, those wheel arch trims. You know... I priced those out. They're not expensive for my yellow truck. I think it was $70 for a set of them, but it was $150 to ship them. So US. So I never bought them. So I was happy to see these ones were on. So we know the floor is in good shape. Got one little patch up underneath there to do. Uh, we're not gonna go through too much. It's very dirty in here. So the rockers are really good. The whole length of these rockers are, there's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with them right up into there, because up in there is where they rust out in that area. So this door here is gonna need some attention more than the other side. I think we looked at the other side, but if we didn't then, so this door here, the whole bottom is gonna to have to be replaced. Now you can buy, yeah, it's same all along. 
So this is going to need some attention. Now I have a couple of choices here. I can go get locally a couple of places guys are selling used doors from these old trucks for about a hundred bucks. And if I could find one that's rust free, I might consider it. But what I was going to say is that you can buy the whole section complete assembled with the outer door scan and the inner door frame all hooked together and you can weld them right in. So then you could, it's a patch panel, so you just take what you need. So you could do the welding along here and have it completely hidden. So that's an option for that. And I have replaced these before, or I've done the repairs on these. It's not terrible, but it's time consuming. So that's that. And I looked at the other side and it's not as bad as this. Uh, the other side has a couple spots, so it's not terrible. Uh, I won't know until I get the re Marty report on it or not, um, whether this had any kind of a stripe on it, if it was a freewheeler or not, and it was repainted over all that. I'm thinking there was something going on, and I'm going to show you why I think that it might have had blue stripes on it at one time, right down in there. So right there is a set of the remnants of a stripe. And that is a piece of vinyl. It's one piece, even though it looks like two different colors. It's two different colors, but it's all one piece. Like uh, it was wrapped. And, and when they repainted this, this truck or this Bronco, they wouldn't have, because it was a fairly, by the looks of it, not a really quality paint job, that they wouldn't have come in here and taken this off. So this would have been installed, I'm thinking, most likely at the factory. It's the same on the other side, exactly the same colors. But what's puzzling is that all those uh, freewheeling stripes had three colors, not just two. So I don't know what's going on there. I have no idea whether it was an early uh, graphics package that went on this or there was a gap uh, when it, before it came around this lip. Was there a gap? to show the white paint behind it, but it still only gives you two colors. So I have no idea. Anybody knows about that? Hey, let me know, because I'm curious on that one. I almost forgot. Uh, one more option is the GT bar that came on this. So that's kind of a nice little thing. I mean, it's not a roll cage or roll bar or anything. These were just a uh, the illusion of a roll bar, and they called them the GT bar, and they weren't meant for uh, support during a rollover. Uh, they were covered in foam all on the top. That one's all missing, but it uh, came in two pieces, or well, actually it would be three pieces. The main bar and then the, each leg that went down and bolted in. So that's it. So yeah, there's another option. I almost forgot all about the GT bar. Boy, that seat's dirty. I'm going to take some cleaning in here. Oh, she's all dirty. Um, another thing that I noticed while we're here, the broken seat latch, but these seats don't slide. The seat on this side doesn't slide. Is that common? You guys own one of these? Let me know. Uh, or am I missing something when they did the transfer, uh, the the conversion over from uh, I assume was a bench over to this? So I don't know. Let me know if you know. I flipped up the that extra spare tire rack, and we got a Ford Bronco cover on the spare tire. That's a nice looking. Uh, I like that. That's a nice looking uh, spare tire cover. Well, I'm just inside here fiddling with the ignition. Uh, there were no uh, ignition switch, or no keys rather, with this, um, with this Bronco when I got it. Not, that's, that's nothing. Like, I mean, you can buy everything you need, replace the locks, ignition switch. Uh, and most of these old Fords um, probably should re replace the ignition switch anyhow. Also, the uh, multi switch in the wheel for the turn levers and start with that before you start fiddling with wiring because I noticed there's some lights out blinkers aren't working turn signals aren't working and likely go in there first at least clean it at minimum and they're so cheap just buy a new one uh, ignition switch isn't expensive either so and the tumblers just just redo the whole thing it was mostly the most likely the door locks are seized too not a that's peanuts. Uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to mention though that I was fiddling with the ignition switch with my keys, the keys from my 79 Ford. And uh, I did get it to turn on a, a, three different times and I was able to check that the ignition, the, the brake light come on and all that stuff. 
uh, no uh, heater fan. So there's some there's some things in there with when the ignition is in the run position or the auxiliary position that aren't working. But not a big deal. We'll get that sorted out in time. That's not nothing to worry about. Uh, no build sheet so far. Of course, I haven't dug too deep, but given the fact that the front seats have been changed out, not likely there's a build sheet in this this truck. Uh, I don't know where they put them in the Broncos. Most generally, they are in the seats. Now, I haven't checked the back seat either. Who knows? If I find it, I'll show it. Uh, not, I haven't gotten the Marty report yet. And uh, I've been wait, I really wanted to show you guys that. However, it didn't come. It's, it's Good Friday right now. So not likely going to see the Marty report until next week. And uh, we'll go through it. I, I mean, uh, next video, of once I get it, we'll, we'll be talking about what this truck was equipped with from the factory, the specs on it and all that stuff. Doesn't change anything, it is what it is right now. Anyway, uh, video's getting long, so let's call it here and we'll uh, pick it up in the next video. Thank you everyone for hanging in there. Thanks for all the subscribers that have been with me for a long time. And thank you for the, and thank you to the people that are uh, just coming in on this project hopefully uh you'll find it interesting and you might want to go back and check some of my old uh, thunderbird videos or whatever repair videos i mean i have a quite a mixed bag of stuff on there you never know what's going to happen here anyway thank you everyone and you guys have a great easter weekend everybody be safe that's the most important part be safe and take care see you in the next one